ready. So here are the answers for the practice for the mole quiz. First question there, what is the molar mass of sodium phosphate? So there's three sodiums. Each sodium is 23.0, so that makes a total of 69.0. Phosphorus, which is 31.0. And then four oxygens, each of them 16.0, which makes 64.0. Add those three numbers up and you get the grand total of 164.0. Yes, it's important to label the point zero. And that, of course, is grams per mole. Excellent. So the next question is for iron 3 bromide. That 3, the Roman numeral, it's just a way that we name compounds, and we'll get into that next unit. But that means that we've got one iron and three bromines. So iron, 55.8. Although, if you are using the little tiny periodic table I gave you, 55.9 is acceptable. Bromine, 79.9. There are three of them, and so when we add those two numbers together, we get the grand total of 295.5 grams per mole. All right. Question three there says, if you were given... 95.9 grams of potassium hydroxide, how many moles is that? And again, my little hint to you, if I give you the formula, you're going to use the periodic table. K is 39.1, O is 16, H is 1. Add it up, we get 56.1. So we've got 95.9 grams divided by... 56.1, the molar mass of the periodic table, that is how we get the 1.71 moles of potassium hydroxide. Question 4. A lab is calling for 7.95 moles of butane. Carbon is 12.0, 4 of them makes 48, each hydrogen is 1, so we add 10 and we get to 58.0 for the molar mass. So the mass of the butane, we take the moles times the molar mass, and we get 461 grams. And yes, butane is a form of gas that can be found in lighters. Not that you'd ever need one. All right, question five. Three bottles of acid are on a lab bench. The first bottle has three moles of sulfuric acid. The second has three moles of hydrochloric acid. The third has three moles of nitric acid. Which bottle contains the most molecules? Of course you know that they all have the same amount. Okay? Doesn't matter if you have one mole of each, two moles of each, a hundred moles of each. If you have the same number of moles, you have the same number of particles. If you actually wanted to calculate it out to prove it, each of them would be three times Avogadro's number and it would end up being 1.806 times 10 to the 24th. But either way, we have the same number of molecules in each one of those. All right, so we're at a Britney Spears concert, and a lot of dry ice is going to be sublimated, creating that fog at the concert. So if 25 moles of this sublimates during I, I, I want to go oh, oh, sorry, how many molecules is that? So to get from Moleville to Particle Town, we have to multiply by Avogadro's number. So the 25 moles times Avogadro's number will give us the number of particles, 1.5 times 10 to the 25th molecules. So question 7, how many atoms are in 522 grams of platinum? How many platinum atoms are in that grill? So we want to go from Mass City all the way to Particle Town. This is our two-step problem. Atoms, I'm sorry, grams to atoms. So when we do this, I've got to take my 522 grams and divide by the periodic table molar mass for platinum, 195.1. That takes me to Moleville. When I multiply by Avogadro's number, I will get to the number of atoms, which is 1.61 times 10 to the 24th atoms in that grill. Question 8. Let me cover that so as not to overwhelm you. 
I've got two balloons, and one is filled with 100 grams of neon, the second with 100 grams of oxygen, O2. Which balloon contains the most molecules? So we've got to go from mass to particles. We're going to need the molar masses, so I've got 20.2 for neon and 32.0 for oxygen. So I need to compare the two. Well, when I compare, when I take 100 grams for neon divided by its molar mass, I have 4.95 moles. 100 grams of oxygen divided by its molar mass, 3.125 moles. More moles, more particles. Less moles, less particles. So you could stop there and totally prove that. If you wanted to go the extra step and multiply and figure out the number of particles, okay. So for neon, 2.98 times 10 to the 24th. For oxygen, 1.88 times 10 to the 24th. So either way, stopping at moles or going to molecules, you'll find that there's more particles in the neon-filled balloon. Question 9 is our density tie-in. So here we have a sample of aluminum being recycled. The density of aluminum is 2.70 grams per centimeter cube. So how many aluminum atoms is that being recycled? Well, the density is mass over volume. So again, to find mass, it is density times volume. So the 2.7 times the 222. That tells us we've got 599.4 grams of aluminum being recycled. We will need aluminum's molar mass, 27.0, from the periodic table. So now that we have those pieces of information, I take the grams of aluminum divided by its molar mass, takes me to Moleville, multiply by Avogadro, and I figured out 1.34 times 10 to the 25th atoms of aluminum are being recycled. In our last problem here, we've got the storage container with 202 grams of phosphorus hexachloride, PCL6, one phosphorus plus six chlorines, 35.5 each of them. That's how we get the 244.0 molar mass from the periodic table. So how many chlorine atoms are in this container? Well, starting in mass city, starting with the mass, I've got to divide by the molar mass, and that tells me how many moles of the phosphorus hexachloride there are. Well, when I take that times Avogadro, it tells me that I've got 4.98 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. But remember now, this is the one where we've got to look at the chlorine inside the molecule. My formula, PCL6, tells me there's six chlorine atoms in every one of these molecules. So when I take that number times six, that's how I figure out there's 2.99 times 10 to the 24th chlorine atoms. Hope this helped, and good luck on your mole quiz.